been a golden year for the Golden Bears. Another thrilling football season, three national team championships, six individual NCAA champions, and a seventh place finish in the Director's Cup, Cal's best ever showing in the national ranking of collegiate athletics programs. On this edition of Bear in Mind, Chancellor and Cheerleader-in-Chief Robert Bergino takes an in-depth look at Cal Athletics, explores the student-athlete experience with three of Berkeley's finest, and examines the university support system for the academic aspirations of its athletes. In our first segment, Athletic Director Sandy Barber joins the Chancellor for a discussion about building the foundations for success on and off the field and offers a preview of the projects that will usher in a new era of high performance. Well, Sandy, both of us have been here for a little over two years, and uh, I know it's been a very exciting time for both of us uh, in many domains, but especially in intercollegiate athletics. I'd be really interested to hear your perspectives on what your first two, two years at Cal have been like. Well, it, as you know, it's been fast and furious for all of us, but it really has been a fabulous two years. And I think, first and foremost, all of the reasons that I was excited about this opportunity and, and that I accepted your, your wonderful invitation to be the athletic director here have all come true. Uh, this is a place of, of, of excellence and one where, you know, we just have such great passion uh, about everything we do, and certainly athletics has been included in that. Now, before coming to Cal, of course, you played a leadership role at some other great universities with great intercollegiate athletic programs, with great athletes, with uh, deeply loyal alumni. Uh, how would you compare uh, the situation here at Cal for all of those components of, the, uh, of our community compared to those at other institutions? What's special about Cal? Well, I certainly have been fortunate to be at some fabulous places, all of which uh, were very academically rigorous, which is one of my, my criteria. Uh, but I think what is unique about Cal is the, the level to which we make that combination and all of those things. Excellence uh, from an academic standpoint with our student athletes, excellence from uh, the standpoint in, in the, the breadth of excellence across our 27 athletic programs, the passion with which those that care about this program uh, exhibit their, their support, uh, the level to which they demand uh, that we do it in the right way, uh, that our student athletes are true students, uh, that uh, everything we do represents this institution in the right way. So I'm going to give you a chance to brag. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the Director's Cup this past year and how our teams did. The NACTA Director's Cup is an award that signifies overall excellence and gives you points for where you finish in different sports. And so it really is, a, it's kind of the Heisman of college athletics. Our highest finish ever uh, was seventh in the, in the 05 06 right. season. Wonderful. Now, of course, not everyone in the Cal community is as strong a supporter of intercollegiate athletics as I am. And indeed, you know, there are some people who are skeptical about all of the effort we put into uh, having such a high caliber athletics program at you know, a very uh, elite academic institution like, like UC Berkeley. Uh, how do you respond to uh, the critics about the importance of an, uh, of an intercollegiate athletic program that involves after all, over 900 athletes and 27 uh, varsity teams. I certainly believe, if done correctly, that not only are there great benefits to the, the individual student athletes that participate in the programs and the kinds of things that they learn about discipline and, and teamwork and, and uh, testing their limits, uh, but you and I both have witnessed here in the last uh, two plus years the great power uh, that exists on, on campus in terms of, uh, of a successful athletic program bringing together not only the student body and the campus itself, but the entire campus community. Well, I certainly think that, uh, that here at Berkeley we have to do athletics in the same way we do any, any of our other endeavors, and, and that's uh, we start to strive for excellence. Um, we, we must uh, 
um, conduct ourselves in a way that, that brings uh, great pride uh, to the university. Our 900 plus student athletes must be diligent students. Uh, if, we're not, if we're not willing to do it in that manner, then I don't think it fits uh, at Cal. Uh, but the good news there is uh, I do believe uh, not only that we, we can, but that we are conducting um, our athletics programs in, in that manner. I do not believe that excellence in athletics and excellence in the academic uh, venue are, are, are exclusive. Uh, I believe you can have it all. You witness our, our three national championships last year, our top uh, ten, our, our seventh place in active director's cup, the number of young people in our programs who are achieving um, 3.0 uh, GPAs uh, and, and higher um, <clears throat> excuse me, at 20, 20 of our 27 teams uh, hold 3.0 or higher cumulative GPAs. Um, so uh, I, I really do believe uh, that I, I've always said that what we need to do on a daily basis is mirror the mission of the university, which is to, to be excellent in, in our pursuits. And if we are able to do that, which I think we're proving we can, uh, then I do believe we are a great fit. Terrific. Good. Now, of course, one of the things that both you and I have been working hard on for the last while is the Student High Performance Center. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that and you know, how it's going and what it's going to do for our student athletes? This is, uh, I, I've been in this business for, uh, for over 25 years, and uh, I have never been involved in a, in a project that has such passion. Uh, the Student Athlete High Performance Center, which is uh, essentially phase one of the Memorial Stadium renovation project, uh, will encompass uh, what we've been working on actually for a couple of years, which is our Student Athlete High Performance Initiative. And uh, the phase one Student Athlete High Performance Center will really become the physical manifestation of that. Um, the phase one will include uh, offices, meeting rooms, locker rooms for 13 of our 27 programs, uh, football and, and 12 of our Olympic sport programs. And then the heart of the building itself will house um, sports medicine, strength and conditioning, and really a number of the high performance elements. And the high performance concept is uh, an integrated approach to each and every student athlete and what elements uh, lead to, uh, to high performance by taking really a unique approach. We don't know of anybody else in the country that's doing this and really taking sports medicine and strength and conditioning and nutrition and sports psychology, all of the, the uh, uh, performance enhancement kinds of, uh, uh, of elements and really integrating them and taking uh, one look at each and every one of our student athletes. Uh, I'm very, very excited about that, uh, that approach as well as uh, the student athlete high performance itself, which would be a great, great uh, uh, addition uh, to our student athletes. And once we've completed the High Performance Center, which I know we're both looking forward to, uh, what are your plans for the stadium and other possible uh, new athletic facilities? Well, uh, certainly uh, the Memorial Stadium renovation is our top priority. Phase one will really address the needs of our student athletes. Uh, subsequent phases two and three will address the, the bowl itself and our, uh, our customer amenities. And that certainly is a huge, a huge project for us. We are challenged uh, from a facility standpoint, not only from the, the, the land here on our own campus, uh, but a number of our facilities uh, have, uh, you know, have gone for, for a long time with, without some attention. Now, Sandy, you yourself, I know, uh, was, were an outstanding uh, student athlete in college. Why don't you brag a little bit? Tell us a little <laughs> bit about yourself. <laughs> well, it certainly depends on which of my coaches you talk to uh, and, and what kind of re revisionist history they're willing to, uh, to come out with. But I was uh, fortunate enough to be a, a pretty good field hockey player and, uh, and have an opportunity to, to advance uh, to, to some, some of the Olympic development programs. Um, I was not a very good basketball player, was very passionate about it, loved it. Um, but it really it gave me two different perspectives, uh, one of, uh, of, a, of a student athlete who, who got a lot of playing time and then the other a student athlete that didn't. And I think that's really, that's really helped me with those two, uh, two varied perspectives. But I, I know through uh, the time we've spent together, both you and Mary Catherine, both very passionate about competition and sport. What, uh, what, what is it about Cal Athletics that, that, that really uh, gets you going? Well, so first of all, uh, you know, when I was young myself, not at the level you managed, uh, but you know, I like to play all <coughs> kinds of competitive sports, whether it was team sports, so I played on you know, baseball, football, basketball teams, uh, tried my hand at golf, uh, but I wouldn't want to tell you what my scores are. Uh, and I'm actually still, I still either. play squash, so you know, I always right. enjoyed, uh, have enjoyed playing sports myself, and uh, I admire seeing people who do it really well. And so uh, 
you know, one of the personal pleasures I get from sports here at Cal is that so many of our students are so outstanding, uh, not just the students, but in their athletics, and so it's terrific. The other thing is that uh, it's absolutely uplifting for the student body as a whole, you know, whether I'm in Haas Pavilion when, uh, uh, you know, when uh, our women are running away from UCLA or, or the men having a great game and, you know, and, the, and uh, the roof is practically caving in with the cheers or uh, at the football games, uh, like, you know, a number we've had this season, right, and where the, just been such a buzz, and, this, you know, and, and uh, students have been so excited, and, you know, possibly the high point for the season was when George Smut, our Nobel Prize winner in physics, uh, led the Go Bears cheer, and, you know, that for me was a symbol of what's great about Berkeley. And I have had so many comments about George Smoot and, and leading the cheers and being part of the, the coin uh, toss ceremony. And when, when you and George first walked out on the field, the student section chanting Nobel, 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 right. that that could only happen at Berkeley. Okay. Well, thank you, Sandy. This has really been enjoyable. And thank you for having me. Go Bears. Go Bears. Up next, Chancellor Bergino takes an up-close and personal look at the student-athlete experience with women's soccer team member Anna Key, basketball player Omar Wilkes, and freshman sprinter Francesca Williams. So, Omar, Anna, and Francesca, I'm really interested to hear from you uh, what it's like to be a student athlete at Cal. And I'm interested especially in student and athlete, both. That is to say, what are the challenges you face as an athlete, how it is to be a student at Cal, and the special challenges that student athletes face in trying to be outstanding in both. So, uh, simple question, and uh, just ask uh, each of you just to tell me about your experiences and that challenge in particular. Okay, I guess I'll start. Um, as a student athlete, um, it's, it, it can be complicated being able to balance both academic and athletic. Um, it can be challenging at times, but I, I like it just because I think it gives me an extra edge on people because <clears throat> as a student athlete I feel like I'm able to balance both and do it in a good way and I think that it makes people look up to you as a person because it's like wow she's not only a student balancing her schoolwork she's also a an athlete as well which takes up a very large portion of our time so that's why I, I enjoy it. So what year are you in in school? Oh, um, I'm a second year. You're second year. Mm -hmm. and, uh, have you chosen a major yet? Yes, I want to do mass communications. I want to oh. do television broadcasting. So well, Good, so this yeah. is a really this is a <laughs> terrific start for you. Yeah. Right. So. so, Anna. I would say the, the greatest challenge of being a student athlete here at Cal is that at um, both levels you're demanded um, to, to be excellent because we are an excellent sports school and we are an excellent academic school. So, um, you're sort of authority figures in both of those fields, your professors as well as your coaches expect a certain level from you and sometimes that can be pressing just in terms of time in terms of emotional commitment in terms of um, just the hours and the, and the like effort you spend in both but um, like as Francesca said I, I don't think that I would rather do it any other way I think that oh, you'll find a lot of the athletes here who are um, exceptional athletes are also exceptional students just because they're the type of people that demand that from themselves and um, this is the type of institution that really supports that. One of my daughters played also Division One soccer. Oh, yeah. She, she uh, was a runner-up academic All-American. Wow. And I, I know in her life, she had to be perfectly disciplined. How do you balance it? Well, I think, the, I think probably one of the biggest challenges that we face is just time management. The amount of time that you're going to spend on your, on your schoolwork, the amount of time you're going to spend in practice. And for a lot of us, you know, we've got to have a little social life in there somewhere. Oh, or else really? you go crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, just in terms of managing your time, but I think the one thing that's interesting is that um, for me personally, and I know a lot of my teammates, we actually do better, get better grades in season because you are on okay. such a disciplined schedule. So w what year are you in and what are you majoring I'm in? I'm a fourth year. Oh. I'm majoring in peace and conflict studies with an emphasis in human rights. Oh, wonderful. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. And, and I know we'll talk later uh, a little bit now. I, I <laughs> said a little bit better of your other activities, right, <laughs> given, given your major. Omar. I mean, I think these ladies hit it on the head. The uh, biggest difficulty is definitely time management, managing, you know, being on the road with your team, also the, the rigors of uh, schoolwork, taking tough classes. I know myself taking quite a bit of units because I'm trying to graduate in time. I transferred from Kansas, so a lot of the units didn't transfer over, so just making up work. Time commitment to practice, traveling, teammates, small social life. 
I, it's definitely difficult, but these ladies hit on the head. That's exactly, I'd say time management's the toughest part of it all. So what brought you here to Berkeley? Uh, why did you choose to transfer from Kansas? Um, it's because you wanted to be on a winning basketball team? <laughs> <laughs> that, but um, also it's just a great academic school, great environment, fans, you know, community. Um, I just think it's a great merger of academic and athletics, and that's ultimately why I decided. And I'm a California boy, so it doesn't hurt being home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, good. Good. And your major? Uh, social welfare. Social welfare. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Good. Good. So you're all, well, you two are going to rescue the world and you're going to tell the world about, <laughs> about uh, that. <laughs> anyway, so, so, uh, so tell me, in, 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 in your attempts to, to, you know, excel both in academics and in athletics, of course, you need a lot of support. And uh, maybe you, each of you separately can talk a little bit about the academic support that you get. Do you get enough? And, and don't be reluctant to say you don't, because if there are ways we can make it better, uh, you know, we'd like to do so. Chancellor doesn't have much power, but I can influence <laughs> that thing. I mean, I have a great staff of advisors and uh, tutors that help me. I find no uh, difficulty in staying on top of my classes and coursework and, you know, passing my classes. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's difficulties for some, but I feel we're provided with ample aid that everyone should be able to adjust and do just fine in season, off season, at any time. I'd say the academic support system starts from your coach down and if your coach really um, emphasizes the importance of you know getting good grades and staying on top of your schoolwork and that I think that sort of sets the tone um, and definitely our advisors are on top of us and make sure that we're taking the right classes and doing well so I think that that helps a lot. Yeah, same here. My academic advisor is wonderful and she helps me with all my classes. And if I need a tutor, I just come to her. So, very um, supportive system they have here. And similar to Anna as well, my coach is very rigorous. He's very tough about getting good grades and being on top of it. How do you think that your experience as an intercollegiate athlete will contribute to your ability to be successful later in life in whatever you choose to do? And uh, maybe Omar, we'll give you the first shot. Okay. Um, I think just the value of hard work um, will actually pay off just because you mean I go to practice every day and it's a challenge, an uphill battle, but I've learned to accept the challenge every day and face it with optimism. Um, just the importance of being able to relate to, I play team sports, so just team chemistry and the synergy that you have to you know, have with your coworkers or whoever you deal with in life. Uh, I think that'll help you know, in the real world. Um, I'd say those two things are probably the most important that I'll carry over from my sports experience into uh, the after college life, I guess. I guess the biggest thing that I'll take from being um, a cat athlete is time management. Just because um, in high school I had good time management, but if you're able to balance sports and academics as well, you'll be able to d be successful in the business world, I believe, or whatever you tend to do. So, so I think that's the biggest thing I'll take away from it. I, I read once, or uh, maybe my mom told me that. <laughs> yeah. Um, like at top law firms in New York, the first thing I ask you is what sport did you play in college? Just because I think that um, being a student athlete um, just sort of promotes a lifestyle of hard work, of discipline, of time management, all the things these guys said. Like, I just think that, uh, I think being a student athlete is actually going to be more valuable to me um, in the future than any other classes I took or any other experience I had. It just being part of a team, knowing how to deal with people, knowing how to deal with time, knowing how to deal with pressure. All these things come out of, out of this experience. So I, I played a lot of sports when I was young, also what happened, uh, team sports. And I'll add one more thing. So I agree with everything you said. Uh, I didn't play it as well as the three of you do, <laughs> but you do, but, but uh, I, think, you know, sp I think sports are important for everyone. The, the additional thing uh, you learn that it, certainly if you end up uh, in kinds of professions I've ended up in is a really important lesson is that you can lose. <laughs> And it's yeah. not the end Definitely. of the world. And, and learning how to deal with losing and coming back and winning the next week, yeah. I think yeah. in some ways is, the most, is one of the most important life lessons. But uh, one of the things I've always thought in sports is that, that uh, uh, you know, as frankly the football team experience between Tennessee and, <laughs> and Minnesota, right? I mean, you can behave way below your own personal expectations. And rather than giving up, you do the opposite and you say, okay, you know, I know I'm a lot better than that. Definitely. Uh, and that yeah. certainly in, in real life, you don't always win in real life and right. you have adversity. So talking about adversity, I read a, a mm -hmm. brief article about mm -hmm. uh, you, Francesca, and, and uh, 
who certainly had uh, an atypical background for mm. students at an, a, at an elite university. But then you obviously not only have survived, you've thrived, and you won a Bill Gates Millennium Scholarship, and you could have gone anywhere, and you chose to come to Cal. So maybe why don't you talk about yourself a little bit, as much as you want to, and tell us you know, why, with your kind of particular background, you chose Cal to come to. Okay, I feel like um, um, receiving the scholarship gave me a second chance in, in a sort of light because um, my childhood was definitely not atypical, very difficult. I um, grew up in foster care, I was in like 20 different foster homes. Part of my life I was semi-homeless. Um, so um, ending up in my last foster home and receiving this scholarship to go to any school that I, I wanted um, was simply a blessing. I chose Cal because it's the best school and I'm, I'm, I'm taking this scholarship as a second chance, as a blessing, as um, you know, a chance to better my life and hopefully better others. You know, you're going to end up as president of the United States. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if, if you just measure the rate, you know, at which your life has been progressing, it extrapolates linearly to yeah. being uh, uh, the second African American woman president yeah. of the United States. And you I'll can guess who will be the first. <laughs> I'll mother. work for you. <laughs> so. Uh, and I guess uh, you recently received both the Pac-10 Conference and CA Division I Women's Sportsmanship Awards, which are both very prestigious and hard to come by. Can you tell us a little bit about them? I think the awards had a lot to do with things I do off the field, more so than on the field. Uh, I, I spent um, not this last summer, but the, f but the summer before that in uh, Malawi, which is a country in Africa. And, um, through actually a professor of mine here, Sam Machombo, he set me up with um, with families to stay with in Malawi, and I ended up um, working in a vill in a really small village um, with a lot of kids, AIDS orphans. And um, one of the one of the opportunities I saw there was an opportunity to promote women's sports. And I, I saw um, I know how positive soccer has been in my life, and how it's kept me on you know one track, a positive track towards success. Mm -hmm. And I and I see that community with everything they're struggling with. Um, I see in that community an opportunity for girls to really sort of embark on a similar path. So a lot of what I did there was set up, um, set up sort of youth soccer leagues for, for younger girls, just basically giving them the bare necessities, you know, just a ball, like, you know, a couple bucks here or there. So, um, so I think that's kind of what the award was about, I think. No one's actually <laughs> really ever told me. Let me interrupt. <laughs> um, a lot of times people receive sportsmanship awards and they don't deserve it or it's false, but there's not a person that I could think of that deserves it more than Anarchy on or off the field. And I'm not just saying that because cameras are on. You can turn them <laughs> off, and I'm, like, honestly. So. so she's being modest. She doesn't want to go in depth. There's a lot more things, and <laughs> yes. it's well deserved. So thank you so much, Omar, Anna, and Francesca. This was really great, and you're just such you no know, model students. It's just <laughs> been so much fun. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you very much. And go, go Bears. Go Bears. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, the Chancellor discusses the athletic academic balance with women's basketball coach Joanne Boyle, Athletic Study Center Director Derek Van Rienen, and Vice Provost Christina Maslak. Here at Berkeley, uh, we talk about student athletes. What does that phrase mean to each of you? Well, I think for me it means uh, students first, but just as important what else students are doing on this campus. I tend to think of all of our students as having one or more hyphens that go along with being a student. Could be student leader, a performer in the arts, student athlete. And it's a terrific thing to think of what opportunities we can provide to really develop that. All of the hyphens. <laughs> I would say as a former <coughs> student athlete, I think of um, it as excellence and the opportunity to pursue excellence on the athletic field but <coughs> as well as in the classroom and to fulfill your potential intellectually and athletically. Mine would be passion. Uh, as a coach, I think I recruit student athletes who have a passion for their sport. And I think when you look at um, what you're trying to do in terms of building your program, you're also looking for student athletes that have a passion for their academics as well. How would you appraise the job we do in enabling the students to achieve both as students and as athletes? Well, certainly I'm biased because as the director of the Athletic Study Center, I think we do a, a phenomenally good job um, at supporting student athletes, and that's a campus-wide commitment. Um, I think that um, the, the fact that, of course, we're the number one public institution in the world 
and that we're in the top ten of the Director's Cup demonstrates that we take um, what we do seriously and we do it um, with excellence. Uh, at the Athletic Study Center, we support students primarily in terms of their academic development and um, hopefully individualizing it in such a way whereby um, students are able to craft a course that they can pursue a major and ultimately graduate from the institution. And that commitment starts from the moment we recruit them, that we believe that they will come here, they will have a successful athletic career, but even more importantly, they'll graduate from this fine institution. I try to encourage my student athletes to, to really use the services on campus. I mean, their time commitment to our sport is overwhelming and they need the support and whether they need it for um, personal reasons or academic reasons or um, just to get involved in the community and doing community service whatever it is my my job as a coach is, is like a teacher is um, how do you use this great institution to to better yourself and so I encourage them to go out and get involved in other activities and other support groups on campus and and do community service to kind of um, give back to the community. So I think that's my role as a coach to help them figure that out as they go through their four years here. Boy, community service, class, <laughs> challenges. I mean, after all, Berkeley's not exactly a simple place to be a student at. <laughs> and top 25 basketball team. Isn't that asking a lot of, the, of your players? It is, but I think, I, I think it's my job to recruit student athletes that are kind of have the same vision as we do as a staff and and what what is that vision and for me it's about getting up in the morning and using your day and I, and I think the big um, challenge in that is time management and how do we best serve these student athletes so that they get, get the best out of their four years manage their time but take advantage of all the services and, and uh, that are here on this on this wonderful campus uh, Derek, I'm going to give you a chance to brag. Uh, back in 2004, the LA Times had an article uh, that profiled our Athletic Studies Center. What did they say? Well, it was a wonderful um, piece of, uh, of journalism in my mind, uh, particularly since it was in the LA Times Magazine cover story, right where USC and UCLA recruit. Um, and it, it definitely said that um, we are a model for the nation in terms of our academic support for student athletes and that we, as an institution, again, care deeply about the commitment to these young men and women, and that uh, that commitment is uh, for earning uh, a meaningful degree. And when you earn a meaningful degree from Berkeley, you, you really have it all. One thing I think that came out in the, uh, the article uh, about that is what's different among, about our program as composed to many others is that the Athletic Study Center actually is on the academic side of the house. Um, and so any kind of issues about, well, gee, is athletics running it and maybe, you know, giving their, you know, the students a pass or something, doesn't happen. Uh, and so this is a, an important model. And I think the, the take-home quote from the LA Times Magazine was that if there was a Heisman for homework, Berkeley would win. Oh, that's a great <laughs> We'd like both kinds of <laughs> We'd like both, that's true. Right? And that's I true. think uh, the way the football team's doing, we probably have a couple of candidates who are going to you know, suddenly move up yep. uh, on, on that list. Uh, Joanne, I'm, I'm just impressed by your passion for your players and for, the sort of multi and for your players being multidimensional people. Uh, frankly, how typical do you think you are as a Cal coach? Uh, uh, do you think this is... Uh, uh, universal among all the coaches here? I, I do. You know, when I, I've only been here for a year, and when I came, I was amazed at, you know, sitting around the first head coaches meeting talking about, um, you know, their vision for their athletes, their vision for their, their programs. And, and first and foremost, academics always came first in terms of conversation. And we're not here to sacrifice um, their academics for, you know, getting on the road two hours earlier or getting an extra practice in. And I think that's... Um, I was amazed for 27 sports to have that kind of commitment from, from every coach. So um, I think when you're in an academic institution, you, you, you seem to attract both coaches that feel that way and, and student athletes. Christina, mm -hmm. of course, uh, all of us are enjoying our Saturday afternoons this autumn. I've been just as happy to see some recent data which indicate that along with our success on the field that our football team's GPA has gone up, the graduation rate has gone it's up. Gone up. What do you? attribute that to? Well, the success of the students in terms of their academic performance uh, has been something that's been a number one concern for the Athletic Study Center, for the coaches, and so there really has been a concerted effort to make sure 
that student athletes are doing as well and, and making, uh, you know, taking advantage of as many opportunities as possible to achieve. And so, yeah, the, the, uh, when you look at the statistics, I mean, we have a lot to be very proud of. And in fact, uh, and one of those happy Saturdays on the Washington game, almost 500 of our student athletes uh, were honored for having, you know, achieved 3.0 average GPAs or above. And that's really quite astonishing. And uh, certainly goes against the, the stereotype that's often out there of the dumb jock. And when you look at the numbers in terms of how well they're performing and graduating and so forth, that, you know, that stereotype doesn't have a lot of legs. Uh, the perception of some other students uh, and, you know, possibly others in the community that they're really here as athletes, not as, uh, right. not as students. And, and that, uh, that their uh, academic successes are really because they get all kinds of special privileges. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, opinion to these perceptions correspond to the reality of the situation. I think the onus of the responsibility of uh, combating the dumb jock stereotype is for student athletes to demonstrate their um, intellectual abilities and their ability to articulate in the classroom and to demonstrate to faculty and to fellow students alike that they are here for an education and that they take their education very seriously. Um, I think it's always wonderful if a student athlete who may not be clearly a student athlete in a class may be getting the best grade um, invites their faculty member to a game and say by the way this is also an important facet of my education here and I'd love for you to come out on Saturday. Um, so I think that the onus ultimately falls on the student athletes to make certain that they don't engage in behaviors that support a stereotype. This top 25 ranking that uh, I just learned about, the, how do you think you know, that may end up putting a lot of pressure on, <laughs> on your players, right, on the <laughs> athletic side? How do you think that's going to affect their ability to manage this incredible balance this year? It's a blessing in that I think last year there was a lot of, there weren't any expectations on us coming in, a new staff and a new team. and trying to figure all this out. We've really tried to put things in place to kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's every part of their life that we're trying to help them with, not just basketball. And we all are in this business because we want to excel. Just as the academic community wants to excel, we want to excel as coaches. And, and it comes up, with that comes a little bit more pressure, but uh, it's what we all work for. And I think our, our kids and our student athletes are very similar, so they thrive under pressure, to be honest. I mean, they really do. They, they embrace that. Um, if you would have seen them at the NCAA tournament, they were, you know, if I can say they were just more like, bring it on. It's, it's just that's their motto. And I think I try and encourage them as much with that in terms of basketball as I do in terms of their, their studies. That's great. <clears throat> Any final comments? I'd like to just um, really congratulate the coaching staff uh, here, Joanne included, in terms of their support of the student athlete and the, the scholars uh, of, of the student athlete um, identity, because without them, it will not happen. One of the successes, for example, of the football team, in that they have a higher GPA than they've had in a decade and the graduation rates are clearly going up is a credit to Jeff Tedford and his coaching staff because we work at the Athletic Study Center with them very closely in terms of an academic game plan working with each individual student athlete and their successes and as Joanne says it's not about um, standardizing the education of the student athlete it's about individualizing it so that they can find intellectual fire and that they can have an epiphany that I love studying physics, for example. I love studying cultural anthropology. And the hope is, by the end of their careers here, that they have not only gotten it done on the court or the field, but they've gotten it done on the classroom. Thank you so much for this. You know, we talk all the time about Berkeley being about excellence uh, in all of our endeavors. And, you know, it's clear that the three of you contribute uh, to guaranteeing our excellence both in the gym or on the playing fields, but in the classroom as well for our student athletes. I think we can all be extremely proud of our efforts here for uh, our student athletes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Chancellor. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Bear in Mind. For more information on Cal Athletics, the teams, and the student athletes, be sure to visit the Golden Bears website at calbears.com.